A pair of inland area wrestlers are coming home as state champions. Lewis Amistoy from the Bakersfield Californian has more from the state wrestling tournament in Bakersfield. Lewis? Well, thanks, Pep. Uh, I'm uh, here at Rabobank Arena. The meet has wrapped up and uh, an interesting night for inland Southern California. A great night for Santiago's Christian Pagadello, who wins at 145. And then, of course, the night belonged to Derek Jones of Bloomington. Impressive win in 47 seconds. And we've got all the highlights here. There was a lot of controversy at 182 pounds with Emmanuel Barber losing to Adrian Salas of Clovis. I'm going to bring in now our expert wrestling anal anal analyst from the Bakersfield Californian, my colleague, Zach Ewing. Let's talk about Barber first and uh, the crowd's reaction to when Clovis's Adrian Salas win. Of course, uh, Emmanuel Barber out of Canyon Springs. Yeah, I mean, first of all, I think you have to understand that here in Bakersfield, here at the state meet, there's a little bit of an anti-Clovis bias. Clovis wins a lot, and the teams that win a lot tend to become uh, the least favorite teams of the crowd, and that's what happened. Uh, and, and also, the, the fact of the matter is, Adrian Salas did a good job, got a takedown early in the match, and then he, he kind of took his foot off the gas. He, he had beat Emmanuel Barber 4-3 to three in a close match earlier this year at Temecula Valley, and uh, maybe he was afraid Barber would come after him a little bit harder, didn't want to make a mistake, wanted to make sure he got that state title, and he backed off a little bit, and Barber kept coming at him, and Salas was dancing around a little bit. I, I didn't think it was out of control stalling, but it was it was stalling for uh, here and there, and the, the ref only called it once, even though this went on for the last uh, four or five minutes of the match. And I think they called stalling once on Barber. Yeah, and that, that was probably what really got the crowd going more than anything, and that's what I couldn't understand. I, I wasn't positive Salas was, was stalling. Uh, you know, that's a matter of interpretation, but certainly uh, Barber was not stalling, and, the, and he got the stalling call first. And I'm thinking, well, what, what in the world was that call? And then Salas got one a little bit later, but of course the first stalling warning is no points. So that didn't help uh, Emmanuel Barber, who trailed 3-1 to one, the early takedown, then they traded escape. So it's 3-1 to one going to the third period, and then he had to get a little bit desperate, got himself in bad position. Salas took him down again and made it 5-1, to one, and at that point it's... Uh, it's all all over, but the shouting and not I I wouldn't say necessarily that Adrian Salas was an undeserving champion. I think he out wrestled Emmanuel Barber tonight. I think he deserved to win at 182, but the refereeing was a little bit suspect. The crowd got into it. Uh, that always kind of makes our emotions heighten a little bit, and uh, and you got to feel for uh, Emmanuel Barber. All right, let's talk about let's go back down to 145 and, and probably one of the maybe the more more interesting upsets of the night. Uh, Christian Pe Pagdaleo of Corona Santiago with the big win. Pagdaleo. Pagdaleo. I can't, I can't Pagdaleo. pronounce it very well, so I'm just going to repeat after you. Yeah, I can't announce it, pronounce it either, but hey, he's a heck of an athlete. Yeah, Christian Pagdaleo, a senior from, uh, from Santiago High School, which really has only had a premier wrestling program for the last three or four years since Coach uh, Steve Glassy got there from uh, Marietta Valley. And, uh, and I'll tell you what, this guy has been the poster child for them. He's a Michigan State signee, and uh, he proved why tonight, today, really, beat the number one guy in the state. That's Victor Lopez of Poway in the semifinals this morning in a really exciting match. Got a late reversal with 10 seconds left to win 8-6, and then beat number two. That's uh, Anthony Valencia of St. John Bosco tonight, and a lot of people thought Anthony Valencia was really the guy to beat. He's a defending state champion, only a sophomore. Uh, was one of those guys you think could go four for four which we've only seen once in California state history. Uh, and uh, we, it won't be Anthony Valencia, thanks to Christian Pagadello, because uh, there I go again. I mispronounced it. Yeah, well, but but yeah. Uh, he, he really took control of this match. I mean, sometimes an underdog wins and you say, ah, he got away with it. He got one lucky takedown, whatever. I mean, he, he knew what he wanted to do coming in. And the amazing thing, Lewis, about this was he lost to Valencia 10-3 to last week at the Southern Section Masters. Comes back. Uh, it was a scoreless first period. Uh, Valencia gets an escape, and then and then it was it was Pagdaleo with the, with really letting Valencia beat himself, letting him get out of control, letting him come to him, not not letting him get to his legs. Uh, Valencia got more and more desperate, and twice uh, Christian was able to get him to go by, get behind him for takedowns, and he wins the match five to three. And of course, that helps Santiago to uh, a terrific team finish here, finishing I believe fifth on the night, fifth in the team standings. Uh, about eight, eight points ahead of Bakersfield for sixth and about eight points behind uh, St. John Bosco for fourth. So very solidly in fifth place. And the Sharks really, uh, you know, if you listen to Steve Glass, he says we're going to be better next year despite losing Christian. We've got a lot of young guys. They had seven qualifiers. Six of them scored points uh, for the Sharks this weekend. 
And that's how you get it done. That's how Clovis gets it done. 11 state championships for the Cougars because they brought 13 guys here, and I believe 12 of them scored points. All right, let's go back now to at 2.20, and uh, probably the most exciting moment of the night, uh, there, was some, there was some dullness in the middle, the middle rounds, basically the middle weights, I guess. And you can sense the crowd was a little bit bored, I think. They started doing the wave. But at 220, Derek Jones Bloomington comes through with a big pin. Yeah, he was facing Wasco's Sean Medley. And this is a classic case of a guy who is just a freak of an athlete. I mean, Derek Jones just physically imposing. We saw him for the first time up close this morning, and both you and I, Lewis, said, oh, my gosh, this guy is a, is a, is a, a man-child. And uh, Sean Medley of Wasco is a tough customer. He came in at 46-1. and one. His only loss was to a Pennsylvania wrestler, so he was undefeated against the state. And Derek Jones uh, really uh, kind of was going backwards off the opening whistle, but he caught Medley leaning forward a little bit, took him, threw him to the ground, might have had him pinned there, except they were out of bounds. He gets a takedown, it's 2-0, and then Derek Jones did what he's done all tournament long. He locked up a cradle. He pinned all but one of his opponents this weekend, and all of them in the cradle, including Sean Medley, in just 47 seconds in the state championship. Well, I find it interesting at 220 and in the heavyweights, you usually see the older kids, you know, dominating those those weight classes. Uh, Medley, 19 years old, or just turned 19 years old. Jones is only 16. Yeah, and only been wrestling for three years. And he said, I give credit to my coaches. They kicked my butt in the wrestling room every day for three years, and they got me better. He also said, I like to go out there and have fun. And I think some sometimes at this level, these guys who have been doing it for a long time lose sight of that. I don't necessarily think that's the case with Medley, who's a, a local guy here in Kern County, and I know, know him pretty well. But a lot of these guys, I think, put too much pressure on themselves and say, I've worked my whole life for this. I have to win state. Jones came out here and said, hey, why not me? And, uh, and why not him? He's obviously very athletic, knew what he wanted to do, doesn't have a whole lot in his repertoire. If the match has gone six minutes, you know, maybe he's in a little bit more trouble because Medley ha can do more things in more situations. But right. Jones knew what he could do, and he does it really, really well. All right, well, that is the state meet uh, wrap-up here for HS Game Time. Uh, it, historic night, uh, Clovis wins the team title. They're third in a row. It's the third time in the meet's history that they've won three in a row. It gives them 11 all-time, also a record. As you pointed out, a third of all championships have come from Clovis. Yeah, pretty remarkable program they have up there. Steve Tirapelli, Adam Tirapelli, the coach, is uh, they just are a factory. And they have the top kids, Adrian Salas. We talked about beating Emmanuel Barber. Nick Nevels, who is dominant all-tournament at heavyweight. But it's, it's not just that. It's, it's the other guys. You know, they have the Gaten brothers who did very well. But they have a guy like Christian Olivas who comes in ranked 15th and took fourth in the tournament at 113 pounds. Uh, you know, beating some guys he really shouldn't have beaten in the consolation bracket this morning. A couple of big upsets. They get some points. All of a sudden, they're getting points where they shouldn't. Maybe one of your guys gets upset or something, and you're 30 points behind them. And, uh, and there's no catching up from that against a good team. All right, well, we're going to close out here now, and uh, thanks for joining us here. We are, uh, I'm Louis Amistoy, and this is Zach Ewing, both of the Bakersfield Californian. Thank you very much for joining us here for our coverage on HS Game Time and PE.com. Good stuff, Louis, and congratulations to Derek Jones and Christian Pagdalau as they earned CIF Wrestling state titles. I'm Pep Fernandez with HS Game Time.